And we are going. This is Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Mawerder. It's kind of a, a dad cast today. We were just talking about uh, the boys putting down their little ones. We got Mike Campbell, who's got a one-year-old daughter, and Tri just saved the day finding the pacifier for Naya and putting <laughs> putting Naya down. Uh, pacifier. <laughs> uh, save, yeah. Pulled it off tonight. Thank God. <laughs> How we doing, Mike? I know this is the uh, end of a long day for you, but kind of exciting that you're having long days a little bit. Yeah, it's it's definitely a nice change. I'm, I'm stoked to be here. Thanks for the invite. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's, it's been a long day, but a busy day for me right now is, is you know, what I look forward to. You know, this last year has been a, been a tough one for us all. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So when, um, so did you guys like just start practicing like this week? Yeah, so actually today was our first day. We okay. started a little bit later so than some of the other schools in California, Long Beach. You know, it's, it's, I'll keep it very short, but Long Beach is, is one of the only two cities in LA County that has its own public health department. So Long Beach Health Department was holding us out. The city, you know, or I'm sorry, LA County had approved some stuff for other schools, but because the cases in Long Beach were a little bit, the numbers were a little different, they were a little hesitant on approving our, our, our return to play and our return to practice plans so um you know we started a couple weeks after uh some of the other schools in, in la county but just happy to be going and, and and so far you know all the sports are doing really well and no positive tests or anything yet that's good it's so interesting that it would it was long beach that was holding you guys out because long beach was like the avp safe haven they were able <laughs> to hold the event in long beach because they were kind of separate from la county <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I should have maybe asked for some advice from the AVP crew, but, um, <laughs> you know, the, these decisions at the end of the day come down to people way higher pay grade than me. And so it's just, I think the hardest part is just kind of managing the expectations with the players. Like, again, they just, they have no idea what, you know, kind of the, the magnitude of the situation, right? They just see, hey, I'm young, I'm fit, I'm ready to play. I feel great. I'm healthy what's the deal, you know? So just kind of, kind of trying to balance that and, and weigh that against kind of what's going on in the city. And, and there, you know, there, there's obviously several parts of Long Beach that were drastically impacted, not just around the university locally. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's been tough, but, but like you said, I, I don't know, I, I, maybe I should chat up Josh or someone over at ADP, see what I got to do to get a media crew out on, on, on our, our courts so we can get the right permit or something going. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> How crazy is it coaching like college athletes and professional athletes at the same time? Cause like you mentioned their perspective is like very narrow and like it, I mean, the age gap doesn't seem that big, but like when you are in college, your perspective is really narrow and it's like, you're having to treat these guys so much differently than you are having to treat your professional, especially when it comes to like mentorship and that, and like going through struggles, which like everybody's kind of going through this year. Like, how's that been? Yeah, that's like a, a super good topic, I think, to start off with. You know, the pro game for me is, is, is really enjoyable because I think the expectations are just so much different. Like you've got so much on the line. You guys know, right? You know, for, for you, try you're, you're putting food on the table. You know, Trav, you're kind of doing the same thing, right? Obviously, without the kid, don't, don't rush. <laughs> um, and, and, and so, you know, you guys kind of get it, right? It's nitty, it's gritty, it's, it's, it's not easy. And you've devoted you know, the better half of, of your pro career for both of you has been a while, um, you know, and, 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 and so you guys kind of get it, you know, and it's the same. So I've been really lucky to coach guys that are kind of share that, that same sentiment, you know, and, and so for me, it, it's just really enjoyable. Now, coaching is also enjoyable college level. Um, it's just different. You know, there's a lot more management that goes in, you know, so, so having, being able to take 20 personalities and, and put them on a common goal and, and see how that plays out is is really fun for me and 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 again taking a back seat to that is even more fun so when the kids really start evolving and you know we're not the type of program that's going to turn out 75 percent pros but we get you know 25 percent or so we'll, we'll go on and try to give it a decent run um and so it, it's really nice to see those kids evolve along the way and provide mentorship there and then the other 75 percent and these are just generalized, you know, generalized numbers. Don't don't hold me to it. But um, you know, the other the other part of that group are are getting mentorship in the form of of various life lessons, you know, and and responsibility, discipline, uh, accountability. You know, uh, the 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 eighteen to twenty one year old range. There's so many bad choices that are still being made, and so giving them a safe 
a safe place to to make those choices and then you know without the fear of you know because there's and this is i'm guilty of this as well we all act sometimes out of fear you know and and, and so i think making choices out of that lane is really challenging. And so I think the pros have made enough of those choices to where they have this huge armory of like, okay, I've learned my lesson. I'm doing it this way. Me, my partner, my coach, we're all, you know, all hands on deck, ready to move forward. And I think the college kids are, are not ready for that. So giving them an environment where they can, you know, really go out and not just on the volleyball court, but socially and academically, they can fail and, and, and feel like they still have their coaches, you know, their coach still has their back and their teammates are all on board with it. I think that's important. So for me at that level of college, that's where I get a lot of the joy of just giving them a place for, for them to do that and, and grow and try to find the best version of themselves. And then B, you know, coaching them through that is also really fun because there's just so much technical. And I, I feel like I have a, a decent handle on technique and biomechanics and whatnot. So I really like giving that to them. And especially if they're hungry, you know, it's just, it's just more and more information that we can, we can pass along. So, um, you know, long answer, we could continue, but um, I hope that kind of gives you an idea. Yeah, sure. you can go as long as you want. I was, I was listening <laughs> for sure. But it's, I think one of the biggest differences I've noticed is that like when you're coaching a professional team, I think that like you're just coaching. And I think I was talking with Marcio about it. And then when you're a head coach and we, when we were talking to Nina Matthews about it, she's like, all I had to do when I was coaching was at Pepperdine was coach. But now there's so much that goes into building a program and being in the office a lot and and recruiting and just paperwork stuff. Whereas like when you're coaching professionals, like you are just there to coach. And I feel like that's probably like pretty rewarding when you after managing like 20 personalities in college and doing the recruiting and program building and meeting with the ADs and the president. And then you get to go to the, the beach and you're like, hey, we're, we're just practicing today. Yeah. Yeah, you missed a big one. Fundraising is in that bucket. Fundraising. As well. Oh man, that, 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 that'll get you. Um, but yeah, dude, you you got it. I mean, I think Nina when you know, and again, I don't want to make her sound like an ancient dinosaur. I mean, Nina retired only a couple of years ago. She she was in the thick of it. But the beach game, even in the last two years at the collegiate level, has just completely exploded, right? You, yeah. I, I've been around it for seven years. This is my eighth year, and and initially, my first year, I took a team to the finals, and I had three good pairs. That's it. You know, and we just, I just, all I focused on was those three pairs and I coached them. I gave them strategy and we, we beat some really good teams. You know, that's not to say my other two pairs weren't awesome. I mean, they were great kids. They worked their butt off, but they had no beach experience. Right. And they had no business playing against some of these, these really, really top teams, but they were doing great because they were so focused on the strategy and learning that stuff. And they didn't take any of that for granted that it, it ended up being really easy. Right. And then, and, and then, like you said, now, there's so much more that goes into it. You have to build depth into, into your sixes, sevens, eights pairs because, you know, layer on top of that COVID and just never knowing when a kid could, could get pulled yeah. out for a, a, for a test or for a contact trace, who knows? You've got, you know, you've got to build a roster pretty deep nowadays. Just, I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, your fives isn't your easy win anymore. That's usually your hardest win. You know, those are usually the matches going three, 15, 13, deuce game, gnarly rallies. Cause again, fives level, Lots of pulling, lots of long rallies. You're yeah. on the edge of your. I, I've almost stopped coaching the fives because it's just too nerve wracking. Because <laughs> there's such little control I have. Like every time I was just like, "Hey, how are we feeling? Do you need water? Calm down, breathe." You know what I mean? Like you give you give them any strategy, and they're just like, you know, the head head blows up, right? But um, you know, the ones and 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 two threes, it, it's gotten so good, you know. So um, yeah, the coaching collegiately nowadays there's there's a lot of auxiliary things that go on and, and i'm sure marcio shared a, a bunch of great info but um it's 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 totally a different dynamic like you said being able to show up to a, a pro practice and it, and everyone's already on the same page They're, you know the briefing is so quick it's crisp they player and uh, the athlete investment is you know way more than the coach investment i don't want to make it sound like coaches aren't working hard they are <laughs> But you guys know what I mean. The film's been watched. The film's been analyzed. They've the athletes have come up with all of their, you know, calibrations and 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 the majority of, of what they want to work on. And they go, hey, you know, I'm feeling good today. Let's let's push some endurance. Or you know what, today was a rough day yesterday. We had a lot of wind. We need to do some side out. Like you you have a language that's already common, and so it makes it super easy to just you know get get right into it, right? And then the debrief the debrief can happen on a phone call. Uh, it can happen. Uh, later that day watching film you know it's it's pretty relaxed right 
uh, with, with college, you've got 20 hours and that's it. You can you yeah. go over violation, you go over enough times, you're getting, you know, scholarship suspensions. It's, 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 it's just a whole nother animal. Yeah. And yeah. you guys, what kind of scholarships are you working with right now at Long Beach? Cause I mean, it's like an arms race now. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we're <laughs> in, in last place. Um, we, we, we have two and a half in-state scholarships. Okay. Basically it comes out to be, you know, about $45,000, which sounds like a lot, but in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, you, you're, you're splitting that up amongst you're allowed, you know, 14 kids could be on scholarship and, and we're nowhere near that number. You know, we have right. a handful less than five. Um, but for us, we've been really lucky. Obviously Long Beach carries a certain, you know, volleyball connection with Misty May and how well she's done there. And, and, and the, the men's program, obviously doing very well the last two years winning, or I should say two of the last three years, I guess we don't count last year, um, winning the national title. And so that's, that's been, you know, a huge boost in terms of, uh, appeal for the volleyball community. And so we've been able to recruit in-state kids really well. Um, and so that's where we're getting a lot of our, our talent is in-state kids who can afford to walk on and then kind of get some, some help toward the end of their career, junior, senior years. So we're, we're way behind that. The NCAA allows six and that, like I said, for us, two and a half in-state, which is tuitions about 7,500, um, you know, out of state, add on another 15 grand, right? Yeah. So, so if I gave a one out of state kid, one, one, you know, young lady from Florida, if I gave her a full scholarship, that's my whole recruiting budget, or oh. I'm sorry, my whole scholarship budget. Brutal. Yeah. So we have to be pretty smart about how we do it. And it's hard. We lose a lot of kids because of that, especially out of state. And, um, you know, we, we, we do pretty well though. We've got, if you look at our roster, we've got over five or six kids from various, you know, states along the coast here, a couple, one, one girls from Italy, a couple of girls from Texas, Indiana, you know, we're all over. We're pretty diverse when it comes to geographics, um, yeah. which I think is important. Trying to blend that all together um, is, is, I think it's important. We all learn from each other that way. Yeah. I think the, how, how coaches and programs navigate the scholarship hurdle is I think you have to get super creative. It, it, I've been really impressed with what uh, mayor has been able to do at LMU. Cause I think when he got there, he started with maybe two and a half. Um, and then I, I think a lot of programs benefit from like sharing with indoor teams and, and at some schools don't do that super well. It's, it's pretty crazy to watch coaches just navigate like these little scholarship issues to try to maximize the amount of money that they get. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things working in our favor. You know, beach volleyball is a fairly affluent sport. So you, yeah. if you are, you know, recruiting a family that, that can afford your school and, and that's their number one choice, sometimes there's a little trade off there where you can kind of talk to them through that. But for us, it's, it, we're, we try to be as transparent as possible. You know, not many kids come in on scholarship and if they do, you know, the expectation is they play pretty quickly for us. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise we like to see them kind of come in and try to work for it a bit and compete. Um, you know, it's very similar. I'm sure Tri could speak to it with, with, with some of the, the things he's seen with men's volleyball, four and a half scholarships for, you know, when I played at UCLA, 30 something guys. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's brutal. <laughs> our, our team actually got really lucky. We were really stacked, but it was because our best player, Murphy Troy, was on academic. Mm -hmm. I was on financial aid. So like we had all kind of these free pieces and that's like what made the biggest difference in terms of our team, like having a really deep roster. But like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's brutal. You have, as a, as a player, you kind of have to like chase the money around a little bit. Well, yeah, it almost becomes part of the recruiting process is like, okay, well, at what point do you introduce that conversation? You know what I mean? Do you want the, do you want the recruit to fall in love with your school, with your staff, with your team or with the financial package? You know what I mean? It's, it's a very, uh, you know, weird dynamic too. And again, you're asking, these are basically strangers, you know, you're asking, Oh, so can you afford 25 grand a year? Like, let's right. get right to it. Right. Totally. But, and it's not even their choice. I mean, it's rarely the kid's choice, right? Yeah. They can afford it. Or yeah. Not. <laughs> well, and that's, and that's like my favorite thing. And this might get me into trouble, but I always talk to the parents and I go, so, Hey, like, how do you guys feel about our school? Oh no, no. It's, you know, it's Susie's choice. Whatever she decides we're going to get behind. Uh, and that's always like the most interesting thing to me because at the end of the day, it's not right. Like it's you, you, beach volleyball, unless you're going to a school. Well, I shouldn't say that there's, there's, there's a couple kids that are, that are going to be on full and they're going to get full coverage and I get it, but right. 
to build a, a, the depth you need, you know, you're going to have to split that up, right? Six, 10 starters, do the math, right? I mean, it, it, it's, you know, so, so there is going to be a trade-off. There's going to be at some point a coach asking you, hey, are you guys good with this? And try, you said you're on financial aid. And a lot of kids, you know, pretty much for us, it's a requirement. You got to fill out a FAFSA. You yeah. got to do it. Let's see what number he comes back with. Let's see if you get any help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the academic aid becomes really big. And that's another thing. Beach volleyball players are smart. Every single kid I talk to is a 4.0 kid. Like you come to me and go, oh, hey, I got a 4.0. Am I going to get academic aid? Well, you're going to get the same academic aid that every other student gets at Long Beach because a lot of students are 4.0. Wow. You know, our, the stats are pretty staggering. It's very competitive. But um, getting, I think, creative with, with that package is always a, a key. You know, just making sure, again, for us, it's honesty but and transparency and just trying to get the realistic you know, A, explain the situation of like, okay, this is kind of the, the framework that we operate under. It's a lot different than the schools down the road, but, um, you know, this is what we can give you, you know, and, and this is, this is what it'll look like. It'll only increase. That's the good news. <laughs> as our budget grows and as our yeah. fundraising grows, hopefully we get that going. It'll only get bigger. Yeah. yeah. I think about like, you know, post volleyball, obviously it's, the, uh, I don't know, the low hanging fruit, as a professional is to like get into coaching and stuff. And then I hear about that kind of stuff, like the fundraising, the, there's so much beyond volleyball that goes into coaching collegiately that I'm like, I don't know if that's for me. <laughs> like <laughs> the volleyball part I got down, but that's why like maybe coaching professionals is a lot easier because you, you're just focusing on the volleyball and you can relate to the, the, the guys in terms of you know their lifestyles and whatnot but like doing the fundraising and the business part and the team bringing all these athletes together that's like some serious work you got in your hands there <laughs> yeah it, it 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 is a handful but like i said there's a lot of enjoyment you know what i mean so once yeah. you once you start enjoying it some of it doesn't feel as as difficult i mean the, the hardest thing i think is just balancing like my time at home because these are kids that are up till midnight texting you nine, 10, 11 o'clock. Oh, I'm watching film. What do you think? What do you think? And you're just like, okay, when do I set that boundary of like, okay, I'm shutting down. You know what I mean? And, and when, yeah. you know, so that, that's an interesting dynamic. The fundraising is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a challenge, but volleyball is what the, like the fourth po most popular sport right now or something like that. So I think the, the money we're seeing some, you know, international organizations, setting some money aside, what we saw a couple of weeks ago when that came out. Yeah. And now I think it's only a matter of time. I think, I would love to, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard, but that, that pro league with the women, yeah. they're set to kick off pretty soon. Yeah. I'm, I wonder, I'm excited you know, for that. It, the rules sound awesome. Uh, there's, I mean, the, the points incentive are really cool, right? Point, you know, pretty much every play there's. I don't know much scored. about it. Can you give us like a, a rundown of, of what uh, things are? Oh man, I'll at, try. Least the, at least the ones that you know. Yeah. Like, so, so, you know, at, at the start of a match, everyone's at zero points, right? A dig is like plus five. Uh, reception errors minus 18 a set assist is plus one a set error is minus 12 uh, a kill is like plus three you know every every oh. stat has a point value and then at the end of the match i assume the highest number is the mvp and they get like a bonus of 30 points and then the the, the team that wins gets a numerical value as well so i, I don't know if it's 30 i'm just kind of i can't i saw something yeah. like a little clip and i'm just trying to retain that info or uh, uh, reiterate that info. Um, and so basically there's point value to everything, positive and negative, you know, so it's pretty cool. Every, like a block is in there as well. An ace is in there for plus five, yeah. a service miss is minus five. Um, so everything is point valued. And then I don't know how the payouts work, but I'm imagining, I'm speculating there's some way that they're getting paid out based off of that per match, or maybe there's a bonus at the end of the year. They, again, the framework is just kind of being released bit by bit. I'm probably not the best person to talk to about it, but I thought, I thought it was like, what a cool way yeah. to like grow the popularity and make it like, okay, I've got to watch pretty much every match so I can know how the, you know, the points are moving. Right. And, and so if I find a favorite player, also the team switch. So it's not always the same team playing the same, you okay. know, there's like 18 ladies and they just wow. rotate around or maybe there's more 24 or whatever, but there's, you know, enough to make, multiple teams that can play each other and then the team switch it's like DraftKings, but exactly right off, like, off. It, <laughs> like it's like next thing you're gonna see what fantasy volleyball like how i mean that's like it's all kind of laugh you know really? jokes for us but i think that would be amazing right like wouldn't that be crazy to see people like drafting you guys and 
you know, and something like that starting for the beach, maybe it's something small, a couple of events, but yeah. I think it's a pretty cool thing. Make you guys switch partners. I mean, it's kind of like the king of the court stuff, but totally. with some statistical value and point, point incentives and payoffs. I mean, you'd have, you obviously probably couldn't do it in like an Olympic year, but um, maybe the year following the Olympics, you know, there's, there's like a little king of the beach tour or something. I don't know. It's cool. It's a cool yeah. concept. Yeah. It's cool just to know that people are, coming up with new ideas and like really trying to push the sport and there is uh fun like you know the funding that came into the FIVB just recently um it just kind of like excites you to be a part of the sport um and not be retiring at, at this point you know that looks like we're going uphill at, le uh, at least a little bit um yeah. you never really know with our sport but <laughs> I, I think the college women and we talked about it a lot on the podcast the college women are really the ones caring or the the fact that college beach is a sport is kind of carrying the sport as a whole right now because it's building such a strong foundation even if it's just for the girls yeah. it's you know, these girls are coming up and ready to play pro and like looking to play pro and and if you're not playing elite level volleyball on the women's side like you're going to drop off real quick with every new year of collegiate girls coming out yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. I wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys think on the men's side? Like, isn't that kind of weird that there's less on the men's side, right? From like the, the, the pool size, right? You know, we've got almost 65 collegiate programs sending out, obviously, let's say an average of four to five seniors. So that's about 240 to 300 kids that graduate every year. And right. a big chunk of that go, you know what, I want to go try to give it a shot. I want to go play AVP next or whatever. Is it AVP next or AVP first? Uh, AVP next. There's AVP next. AVP versus for the juniors. That's I, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm recruiting those events. I'm, I I'm hoping all a, the time. I'm hoping a 23 year old middle is in playing AVP <laughs> first. <laughs> you know, Trev, we can we can draft something up for you on a birth certificate. All right, we'll get you going. You just gotta shave. Um, no, but but I think you know, out of that 300, a handful are gonna come out and try it out, right? And now, why is it though on the men's side do we still see? I mean, we see some great young kids, right? I mean, we've seen a handful just on the American side and look internationally, there's a ton, right? Is it, what do you guys think is driving that? You know, because I do think the men's game is still, and that's why I enjoy coaching it so much. It's so fast. It's so strong, explosive. The women's game is also, you know, trending in that direction, but there's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of tactics when, you know, serving is a huge aspect of, of both sports, blocking a little bit more for men, but you're seeing some women on the women's side just take over at the net right what do you guys think is fueling that on the men's side is fueling like the rise in in people like coming out to play yeah or? i mean it, it looks like the talent is in, improving you know i, I heard on a, on a, a separate podcast but i heard something interesting about how you know we we you you each generation and try you might have talked about this in one i listened to too but each generation is going to kind of mirror the generation that comes before look at basketball jordan Kobe, LeBron, right? And everyone kind of does it their own way, but it's at a better level, higher level. You know what I mean? And so you're still seeing that with the men's game, even though there's not this young group of, of kids that are getting college training. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You still see think, kids coming out and, and killing it. I think it's definitely slower than the women's. Like mm -hmm. I'm not as, as, you know, I made it to the top tier of the men's side. I'm not looking back and being like, okay, this these kids are going to be up here at the top you know top four teams for the u.s is usually like who's getting paid from the usoc and all that i don't see the team that's going to be there uh in the next year or so i i think uh andy will probably be you know he's, yeah. there's a few guys but like sure i'm not looking back like how i'm looking at the girls side and like looking at the college rosters like holy crap like yeah. you better be on yeah. your game girls um <laughs> but i think that it's lucrative either way because people want to play professional sports and stay here in the u.s and like live at home and go play it's one thing if you're getting paid millions of or let's say hundred thousand dollars you know a yeah. significant amount of money to go play volleyball most of these men can go like what, like 10 guys a year can go over and make more than like 30 grand. I don't know. I don't know what the exact number is, but yeah. the point is, I think they want to play professionally and they can give it a shot, but they don't have to invest all of their time and money to mm -hmm. go live overseas. They can just go yeah. live in California, give it a shot. 
um, and play professionally. I just don't think the men are coming out with experience and that's what's making it take longer. The girls are coming out with experience and beach is absolutely an experience game. I don't care how athletic you are. If Matt Anderson comes out to the beach, he's not gonna be a top guy first year. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that with, you know, Reed, Reed and Reed had already had experience and he's obviously great, but he had already played beach and it still took him a year or two. Right. Yeah. Um, so these girls are coming in with experience and that's, what's so valuable. That's what I feel like us Hawaii boys are so lucky because we've played, we grew up playing beach and then going to indoor practice and like going back and forth. So we kind of understood the, the flow of it and the feel of it before we got out here. And by the time we got out here, it still took a while to crack through, but I mean, Taylor was, wasn't a top guy for the first two years or so, mm -hmm. um, year or two, but, um, yeah, I, I think that's just what it comes down to, but I mean, who doesn't want to play professional beach volleyball? If you're a volleyball player, like you're at the beach and you can make money and stay live in California. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're young, right? Like if you're 21 coming out of college and, and you're just, you know, you can, you're living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, nowadays, you know, I, I, something I did was just, hey, I'm going to, when, when I was in college, I'm just going to coach club and get myself a thousand bucks a month. And that's yeah. plenty yeah, yeah. for Stop. that lifestyle, right? <laughs> you get you get about 400 bucks a, a month on beer and, and 800 for rent. Boom, there you go. Figure out another way to make 200 bucks in your tub. <laughs> uh, you don't even eat that much, right? And the food you're eating is what, like McDonald's, pizza, you know, you're not eating healthy. Um, yeah, and yeah, so it, it, you're like qualify for one event and you make a thousand bucks and you're stoked. Yep, exactly. So I, I think, yeah, you're right. I think the men's side, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's, it's the women's side. I mean, you're right. You look back at those, some of those pairs coming up and how young they are and that they're going to be there for a big chunk. I think it's just, it's going to get nasty. You yeah. know, it's going to be what tournaments can you get to, right? And, and how do those points going to unfold and how do you do at those tournaments, obviously, right? Um, and then on the men's side, I think you're right. Like there's all those young guys are a little bit few and far between, but there's still a couple of years where they got to gather that experience, but it is cool to see the fact that there are players, you know, that are coming from indoor. And like you said, you know, turning down 30 to 50 grand, and that's just a range depending on what country you end up in. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, some people go, some people don't. So you see a lot of people go and then hate it and come back and get right. half contracts. And, you know, you yeah. just hear some horror stories, but you, I think, you, like you said, it is pretty cool to just be able to live what three, four blocks from the beach and, share a room, yeah. kind of, you know, couch, couch surf it if needed and, and, I was, and play I volleyball. Was gonna, I was going to keep playing um, indoor. Like I was taking little, you know, Puerto Rico, short Puerto Rico contracts, a uh, little stint in Turkey. And I was like, this is, this is great. I'll take this. And then I can come back in the summers and, and play a little beach. Uh, and then it turned into a full-time thing for me. But, and then I was, you know, without even thinking about it, I was gone from indoor, yeah. but I mean, I was going to go take those $30,000 contracts and like just go have fun. Yeah. With it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think, sorry, Trav. I think the guys just seem to like that decision is, is pretty emotionless. I should say, you know, it's just like, Hey, all right, cool. I'm going, you know, I don't, I don't feel like, and I hate to make it a gender thing and generalize, but I just think for, for kind of what, what you're like the European, I'm just going to say Europe, but let's say foreign volleyball on the indoor side, I think it's pretty, you know, there's not much curb appeal, right? You, right. You're not, you're not, it's not very glamorous. You're not going over there and going to get just the, the royal treatment, especially if you're American <laughs> and there's only like one or two on a team. Like you, you, you got to put your head down and get to work. And I, I think for guys, they're just, cause they don't think about it all. They're just like, whatever. All right, let's do this. I'm going to go hit a ball and have a great time and right. get paid and blow that money and whatever, you know, and go party on the weeks off or whatever. Um, and so I think they make that transition a little easier. Maybe that's what's keeping that men's side. So, so, you know, I mean, it's so competitive, right? The women are a little more logical than hundred <laughs> percent. That's a good Turkey, way to put it. <laughs> I went to Turkey and basically just got stuck in the hills until someone came to give me a ride back. And it was like snowing. And it, was, it was like, where's the gym? Which street? Which way am I going? <laughs> yeah. Do I have to jog there through the snow? I had to wait for a shuttle to come get me. Like, oh man it, it was miserable but for some reason i enjoyed myself <laughs> i think it's uh I, I feel like it's a combination of kind of what both of you guys were saying where mike there are like a lot of guys in the u.s coming out but they're coming out after 
they've played indoor. So which leads to what kind of Trout was saying is that they're a little bit behind. Whereas, because when you first brought it up, you know, what's bringing in all these guys coming to the beach, but you look in, in Europe and now they got a lot of federations where their kids are just playing beach. Like they don't even bother playing indoor. Like in Europe, like Sweden and Norway, like now you got kids who are basically coming up like our college women where they're training to be professionals like from a pretty young age. So I think that our, the youth, the younger men in the U S are going to like, they just take longer to develop because beach is option number two. Yeah. But I think one of the biggest appeals is that the, the barrier to entry to become a professional beach volleyball player, I think is probably the lowest of any professional sport. Like you can't just sign up for an NBA tryout. Sure. Right? Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you got the, the Manhattan Beach Open, though, those those last couple seeds there, the, the pretty low seeds are always a little suspect. <laughs> yeah, but I and I think the lifestyle is more appealing for for guys um, just because, like you said, like, oh, a thousand bucks a month. I'll live on a floor for a little bit and, and we'll make it work. And we're just kind of yeah. we can be dumb like that. <laughs> Not saying that women can't, but we just have that tendency. <laughs> as sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Yeah. Hey Mike, yeah. what um, what? Cause you did. You're so busy. You got so much going on. What made you want to join the program and get a, a pro team, even and on the men's side? I know it probably like is cool to see the game on both sides, but to have a men's team and then coach all these women on uh, you know, with your normal job, like what was sure. the process there? Um, yeah, just to get my wife angrier at me. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the, for me, you know, it started out, well, I started with Jeremy and came and, and Jeremy was, you know, he's been a long time buddy of mine and um, things, you know, it seems like, I, you know, there's, there were, this was what, three years ago, I, I had a lot of free time in the mornings and I was, you know, go run on the strand and, and kind of try, try to do my best to, to avoid the, the dad bod life here. But, um, <laughs> you know, now I just put in the lead, the bare minimum, but anyways, that's a, that's a, I digress. Um, <laughs> So I, I just saw Jeremy out there, you know, by, and Jeremy's kind of sometimes just out there serving balls. And I was like, hey, dude, let me, you want me to just shag for you? You want to, you know, it's good to see you. Let's catch up. And the next thing you know, he's like, hey, you, know, you mind hitting a couple of balls at me and my partner? And then it just kind of snowballed. And so like every morning, eight to 10, I was out there on my morning jog and I just kind of detoured. And, you know, this is a funny story. I, I, I did the same thing in high school. So I'm repeating a pattern in high school. I was on the cross country team. And I would run, I went to Sam High, Santa Monica High School. It's a couple blocks from the pier. And there's a strip of courts there, four courts. And they did work up, right? Bottom court, middle court, middle court, top court. And so I would, I literally joined the cross country team so that I, cause I knew they would run past the pier and I would, I would detour down to the courts and go play on the bottom court. And then every <laughs> year I got a little better and I eventually got to the top court. But that was the only reason I joined the cross country team. I just wanted to go, you know, kind of jog by detour to the courts and then I would see that running group on the way back and I would, I would run back up and, and join them and I would always make sure I was last I never wanted to beat anyone because they knew what I was doing so I didn't want to get you know I didn't want anyone tattle on me right. so so that's kind of where it started and so then I, I started doing the same thing with Jeremy and came I was just running by and I go hey all right I'm here you guys need an arm and I would get on and you know so it started out just as fun and just hanging out with some some of my you know my boys and um and then AVP you know we get into March April and things were on the college side, it was the year we didn't we didn't make NC2A. So kind of by May, I was I was wide open, and 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 so um, college game takes a you know a pretty hard break there for the summer. You can't do anything with the kids. So from May to August, I was wide open and just fit. And so I jumped on board with them, and and then I just really started enjoying it. And you know I think the team for me, what, what kept me there was just there, there were three guys that were just all kind of at the same stage in their lives. You know, Kane's wife was pregnant at the time, and my wife was what we, we were trying and so we and then Jeremy with his kid we all kind of had the same goals of like hey we're gonna get here we're gonna work our butts off for two hours five days a week we're gonna we're gonna put in that level of training for me it was easy because that's what I was already doing I mean I've been working 360 days a year for the last seven years you know it just kind of comes with, with being a coach you know you're, you're you're not getting paid millions of dollars so you got to have a ton of side hustles you got to coach club you got to do lessons you know there's there's a ton of stuff but I it, it's all it's all it's all fun you know and so I started with those guys and we were doing good. We had a couple of good showings, you know, we took second in Austin. I was like, hey, we're, this team's pretty legit. And I don't know if I'm doing anything, but at least I'm there training them and 
hitting balls at them. So at least I'm helping. I got to be helping, right? I can't be hurting. Right. And then we ended up winning Seattle and I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm, I've got to be the good luck charm. They both got their first win. Like what, 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 were, we, what were they waiting for? You know? Um, and then, you know, my head got a little big. We didn't finish the year as well as we wanted, but anyways, um, you know, so, so initially I was just like, I just wanted to, you know, help out Jeremy as a, as a friend. And then it kind of snowballed into, you know, okay, I'm, 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 young i'm fit i'm giving them you know a decent swing here and i know what i'm doing because of i've got you know all the experience of doing it at the college game um and and so i could control it all the way they wanted and it, you know, they liked it so that snowballed into the next year and then and, and now we're here now and and you know time management is definitely it's, it's it's helped to that i've always i've always been busy ever since i was in college i've worked three jobs i've played you know played for the men worked for the women coached the club team was a tutor with a note taking you know i've always been busy that's all i've ever known and so, it, it, and that, you know, this last year has been weird not being busy, but try as you're aware, spending time with your daughter, you're always busy. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you're always on alert, especially yeah. she just started walking and, you know, tonight she just walks right into the dresser face first. I was like, well, that was cool. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, prior to that, I've always been busy, right? Always in volleyball for me, if I'm able to make a living off volleyball, I'm stoked, you know? So coaching club a couple of times a week, doing some lessons a couple of times a week, and then now having an opportunity to coach college and coach the men. And for me, the men are doing a lot of, you know, I do the same exact drills I do with my men. I do with my, my college team, right? It's a little bit at different speeds. You know, with the men, it's a little bit more about efficiency and not tiring them out because there's not 10 girls on a court or whatever the numbers are. With college, it's a little bit more about, hey, let's get as many reps as we can crank out, right? And, and, and we'll watch video and analyze quality maybe later on. But with the guy, you know, with the men's pairs, it's like, you know what? We're going to do four balls times four rounds and that's it for the day. We might only pull six, you know, for 16 balls and those are their reps and they're done with the women. It's like, we're going to do this until you figure it out. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so the guys, I really like getting, you know, some of those reps in with them, briefing, debriefing, getting some of that, that feedback from them. And then I can balance and, and figure out how it works best for the, for the collegiate game. And so that was just one added benefit. The other benefit is I, I really enjoyed learning from Kame and, and Jeremy, you know, I, just as much as I was helping them, I felt like I was learning a ton from them. Right. And for me, coaching is, you know, if I'm able to and fortunate enough to do it for as many years as I'm working, I would love that. And so I knew getting in young and learning and, and, you know, I've always been a fan. I've always enjoyed watching the tournaments and knowing how hard the athletes work but being a part of that and being at practices and kind of doing some of the the film the, the, you know the film review and the strategy stuff it, it, you know it, there's a lot that goes into it right and so being a part of that was really fun for me because I've always enjoyed I play I still play it you know I, I'm nowhere near at the AVP level but I still have a, a you know a really good time playing volleyball so I just what volleyball has done for me if I can now you know maybe mentor is not the right word but if I can parallel what some of my avp pros are doing i think it's just a really special experience for for not just me but for them if i can share any of my insights with them or or uh you know i can't say experience my coaching experience let's put it that way right i think there's a lot of situations that pop up in coaching that i've i've encountered before but maybe the athletes haven't right. um so that's been really fun so for me that's kind of why i keep doing it you know i would love to get on the women's side it does like you said try it probably makes more sense that i should coach a women's pair but <laughs> I'm having so much fun with the guys, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, they're, they're just as much friends as my, you know, as, as I'm their employee, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, and you guys know the beach culture is really unique. It's really special. And so what started out as friends has now evolved in, okay, they pay me a couple bucks and then they pay me a percentage, whatever, you know, at the end of the day, I know I'm not going to make my life income off of them, but I just want to, you know, there is some, some time value that I need to, <laughs> that I need to worry about, but, um, yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying the men's side and the speed of the game and, and just seeing it done at such a high level and being able to kind of transpose that onto the college game. Uh, you know, it's, it's really refined what we're able to do and kind of, you know, we have like this pretty thick playbook that we send our college kids. And a lot of that is just literally every practice with these guys, I'm editing it. I'm using new terminology that I like with them or that they're, you know, I've been coaching Casey Patterson for a couple of weeks and he's given me just gold, just gems of these just hilarious one-liners. And I'm like, okay, that's going in. The <laughs> and then I'll put like an example with him doing it or saying it. And it's just like, it's just cool because again, all, all these kids, they know the names, you know, this isn't, this isn't like some, you know, some random person that we're, we're talking about, you know, they know the name, they've seen them play. 
the small pool of, of athletes. They know who's, you know, at the top and how, what the, I'm sure they, you know, the work they put in to get there. So these athletes totally respect that body of work. And so when you see that name in your handbook, you're like, Whoop. eyes magnify and you're like, okay, I'm watching that clip, right. you know, versus if it's just like some, maybe an alumni. Oh, well, I shouldn't say that because Misty's in our handbook everywhere. But, <laughs> um, you know, maybe if it's a teammate, you're just like, oh, okay, I get it. But she's just a teammate. Well, you see Triborn or Travis, you see your names, you're like, oh, okay, we got Lefty doing this. We got Tri blocking like this. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to lock in on that stuff. Yeah. Love it. What uh, what pro team are you coaching right now? So you are you just with uh, Chase and Casey? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've kind of I've kind of moved through Jeremy and Kane, not by choice, just kind of what happened. Obviously, uh, uh, Jeremy actually started coaching at at UCLA as a volunteer, and so yeah. his schedule and I and mine were literally the opposite. It was like he wanted to train in the afternoons because he had work in the mornings and I wanted to train in the morning because I have work one to 4 PM every day. Right. So that was just kind of tough. And then uh, I worked with Kame and Chase and then they split and I just kind of moved on with Chase because Kame's new partner, uh, Theo really liked Scotty Davenport who we had last year. So it was just kind of like this weird revolving door thing that happened. And I was just like, okay, I'm available. And Chase was like, yeah, dude. So I worked with him just solo and you know built a little rapport with him and so now he asked him and casey asked and so it's been good you know a couple of weeks in and yeah. again i don't know how much i'm going to teach casey patterson but i'm going to learn <laughs> a lot from him and i'm going to i'm going to try to feed the energy that he has and feed off of it and so it's been it's been really fun and so we'll see how they do in the country quota coming up yeah you guys uh, got a big one yeah. coming up uh thursday right everyone yeah all, yeah. all teams guys, are, all four teams are in there huh that's guys kind of different for you try you guys don't play each other, right? No. Okay. No, they're, they're, I think they're playing Kame and Theo, and then we've got uh, Bill Let's, and Billy and. You can and give Miles. me the dirt then. Now that now that uh, Kame's all. <laughs> hey, you guys! You guys know. You guys! You guys got it all. You guys have played each other so much. I, I mean, it's so funny because like when I was coaching Kame and, and Chase last year, they're like, "Hey, can we put together like this big playbook of like every opponent that we're gonna play and all their tendencies?" I'm like, "Dude, you see the same guys." we can talk about it right now. I can give you everything and you guys can give me everything. Like it's, it's in your head, you know, they know, and then it just comes down to execution and maybe some of the tactical stuff that happens in a match, right. With serving, blocking, whatever, et cetera. Um, but I feel like you guys respect each other so much that you obviously are doing your work and studying opponents and you know, kind of tendencies and, you know, maybe they surprise you. They're working on something, but you guys are such smart volleyball players. You pick up on it and you make your adjustment. Right. Yeah. You know? And then, and, 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 and all those teams have coaches. Obviously, you can't coach in the tournament, but you know, there's there's going to be a lot of ideas floating around there, you know. And so, <laughs> um, I don't have any dirt, you know. I, I don't. I, I'm I'm loyal to my guys, even my ex guys. But no, I, I wish. Uh, I'm excited for that match. I think you guys. I, I mean, we haven't seen them play yet, right? In a, in a tournament, so um, kind of a wild card team a little bit. Yeah, for sure. No, I think those guys would be. I think that's a good partnership for them, at least like emotionally. Like they'll take care for they, sure. They'll they'll balance each other. Whereas your boy Chase and Kim, not so much. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an interesting dynamic just because again, I know Jeremy so well and he was obviously energizer, shit talker, you know, intimidator, whatever title you want to give him, right? Bad guy, whatever. And then Kane was just your friendly Canadian. And now, you know, obviously he's <laughs> he's assumed a new American identity. And and so last year with with him trying to be the rah-rah guy, it didn't, it didn't, you know, seem to click, obviously. Um, but they still, what's funny to me is they still had amazing results, you know. Oh, so yeah. it just speaks to how good a volleyball player, beach volleyball players they are, right? But yeah, yeah, I think that's such a big part. You guys are there's so much mental fatigue that that is involved in playing at that level. And now if you layer that on of like partner dynamics. And, and, and that can, you know, that can shift the, the momentum in a match pretty quickly. Well, even um, traveling with a guy, travel across the world with him, you're fully yeah. jet lagged, stay in a hotel with him. He has everything to do with how much money you're making with every, and you're seeing it all his routine. And like, it's just too much of one person. And if, if you, your personalities don't balance, it's just like draining, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we, I didn't, I didn't, I don't do any international travel, I, I, but I know exactly what you mean. You know, it's funny. I, I look back on the one, the tournament we did win in Seattle with Jeremy and came, and I remember just having a great time. You know, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I remember the volleyball, super high level Jeremy with some crazy service run and came playing some awesome D, but the night before the final, we went out to some music festival and just 
Jeremy was just totally loose. I felt, you know, I was having flashbacks of college parties and, 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 you know, we were just walking around listening to these like high school rock bands and like just <laughs> vibing out with parents. And, you know, so it, it, it's funny because the dynamic was just so loose. And so, you know, you weren't, like you said, you're not just kind of sitting there like, okay, I don't want to get in his way. I mean, he's not, he's getting in my way. You know, it was just really mellow. Um, and, and that's with a third, with a third person, a coach sleeping on the floor in the room, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was all good vibes. And so it, it's, it's kind of funny you, you mentioned that because now that I think about it, that's, that's a huge part of it, right. Of like the jet lag travel fatigue. I mean, that all adds up and now you're going to go perform at the highest level and you're pissed at your guy because he, you know, took a crap that's at the door weird. open or something weird. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to, I'm going to take you guys off the headphones real quick. I'm losing you yeah. for a second. Okay. <laughs> Hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my that was my time to kind of cut out when I was talking about crap. So sorry about that. <laughs> you censored yourself. <laughs> exactly. do, you, uh, do you notice any difference coaching the guy who's played in the NBA? Uh, yeah, like for sure the analytics and just like you can tell like he sees the game. He can handle a little bit more information. And that was like a big thing of last year. Like for me as a coach, I had such a hard time. Like, how do I balance the amount of information that Chase wanted with what Kane wanted? Kane wanted simplicity. He wanted freedom. He wanted to be able to kind of do his thing, just give him a starting position and, and read from there or work from there. Backwards. Yeah, I, you know, and that and Chase that's played not for as long as Kane. And Kane's like, you know, he's an Olympian and he's seen the game for so long now. It's interesting. Yeah, and so well, I think it, it kind of to me it kind of it made a little bit of sense. I was just like, okay, Kane, let's use kind of your experience to just kind of read the situation and, and whatnot. But but Chase was like, okay, I want a plan A, I want a plan B, plan C, a plan D. And he wanted all of those adjustments for every plan given to him at a timeout. You know, I exaggerate a bit, but that's the amount of information he could handle. Hmm. And he's and, and if he can handle that, then that means he's processing that on every play. Like, it's just a lot of um, anticipation. I think that's one of the biggest things of, that I saw coaching, you know, and that I'm working with him is he's anticipating quite a bit. Or at least that's kind of the thought process he's going through his head of like he's, he, you know, he's obviously played in the NBA for a number of years and he's an extreme athlete um, and, and, and which who does lack some of the tactical and strategical experience, but not for brain power. You know what I mean? It's more of just like a repetition thing, right? Of like, okay, I need to do this rep in the hundreds of thousands of times before I completely master it. And, and, you know, things that you guys are going through right now, you know, try maybe for you being able to play it as a young, you know, stud in Hawaii and you're, you're getting those reps on the little baby court at Outrigger, you know, you, you guys are, you're getting some of the, those, those just that, that touch that, that yeah, takes time, you know, yeah, for sure. exactly. And so Kane really relied on that. And that's why he was just like, okay, I'm going to just give me an idea kind of what are the tendencies? What's the flow of the match? But Chase at a time, I was like, I need this, 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 what are my adjustments on this? Is it, Am I leveraging? Is it alignment? Is it timing? Am I early? Am I late? You know, so there was just a lot of information for me. And, and, you know, my style is not to like, just focus on one guy. It's more flow and it's more, okay, what is the match like? And what is kind of going on on their side? So I kind of was hard for me to balance. How can I give them all that information and just focus on him, but also keep it simple for Kane and also kind of get a, get an idea of what, what are Tri and Trev doing on the other side? Right? Right. What are they giving up? What are they, are they late moving? High, you know, is it, is it high, high delay block? what's going on? What's the service plan? Are there, are there any patterns? Right. So for me, I think on the men's side, as, as when I get to just coach, I'm trying to find patterns, right? I'm trying to recognize what are the patterns of the match and where can we shift the patterns into our favor? Right. I think try, we had a, you know, a good scrimmage the other day. It was just like yeah. these side switches were crazy six, one, and then you're fighting for like a three, four. And if you were getting three, four in the wind, you're like, Oh, that was amazing. Great side guys. <laughs> you know, we lost, we lost more points than we won, but three, four, we're, we're winning this match, you know, and then it would just kind of keep flipping. And so right. if a coach can help recognize the pattern of like, okay, how can we steal one point? I think that's super beneficial when you're playing a match like that, that's going to come down to two points, you know? Right. And so just, it was, it was a challenge. I mean, we figured it out. We had, you know, some great matches, some great results and just, di you know, divulging all that information and then not any of it. It was just, it, it, it got, almost too much you know and not for me <laughs> just for the guys are like okay this is confusing you know so developing a common language i think is is super important yeah. and and we didn't get a chance to do that last year and so i think it, it was something that would have come but you know the the mental side and the fatigue i think kicked in they're just like hey we've got you know some other opportunities we're gonna go for it and so 
don't yeah. think it hurts either of them very much. I mean, right. They just basically swap spots from a, from a four to a five or a five to a six. But um, you know, I do think that it would have been interesting to see how that dynamic played out because they're both kind of like right. mellow, mellow guys on court. You know, they're not too high. Um, they just kind of stay pretty stoic and you, know, you see came get fired up a little bit, but he, what I noticed he fed a lot off of Jeremy and then he would try to feed off chase, but sometimes chase would like make an incredible play himself, like bounce ball. And he was just like, okay, cool. Right. You know, but then, it, but then if he made like an awesome set and you didn't put a ball away, chase like, dude, what the heck, you know, right. like there was like an, <laughs> that same expectation of like, why didn't you bounce that? You know, like, right. and so maybe that's like an, I, again, I, I have no idea the dynamic of an NBA player. Well, there's five um, guys. There's a full team on the NBA, right? So yeah. So I mean, there's there's a little bit more job. shared. You can just do your job and trust that the other guys are gonna do their job. But like when there's two guys, you have to adapt to that person and like to their playing style, whatever makes them play well. Even if it's not what makes you play a hundred, because two guys playing at ninety percent is a lot of bet a lot better than one guy playing at a hundred. But that hundred on one side is bringing the other guy down to a 60 yeah. you know so it's like a lot of like for sure you have to adapt to every partner so much it's, yeah i think that's a great point i mean in his role too in the nba i think it was you know he's a he's a three-point shooter and he's an athlete right come off yeah. come off the you know the edge there and, and dunk a couple balls here and there you know i mean it was it was he was a very skilled athlete but i think maybe that role like you said of just like hey i'm gonna get my job done and you don't need to worry about me, but if right. you're not getting your job done, I'm going to let you know. Right. You know, and the same thing, like he, he, he wants that as well, you know, but it's, it's just, you, you bring that to beach volleyball. And I think, like you said, it's just, if you're doing a hundred, even 110 and you're like full speed ahead, but your partner's just kind of like, dude, bring it down a notch. You're not right. helping me here. You're not, you know. Um, but I think what the hardest thing is just the articulation of like, okay, do players really know what they need at this point in their game? You know what I mean? I think that's something maybe you guys could speak to a little bit is like, okay, what do you look for in a partner? What do you look for in a coach? Like the, the ability to kind of share that and talk about that and then stick to it, I think is something that Chase is working through and probably Casey's great for him because Casey can be like, dude, I got you here. I'm going to need you here. I know what I need to be great at 40 years old. This is what I need. And, and you know, he, these are conversations he's already been telling me. So I'm like, okay, this is really helpful. Yeah. Right. And so I think that that balance is, this year has been great for Chase because now Chase can kind of dive into the things he needs to build experience on while not worrying about, is my partner getting his job done? Right, right, right. No, totally. I think one of the, like the deepest I've had to dive into, I guess, partner situation or into anything really is when you're starting a partnership out. First time around, John Hyden wanted to play with me. That's no brainer. I'm just going to copy everything he does. For sure. Second time around, <laughs> And I've only really had two partners, to be honest. Uh, Trev, I asked him to play just because I was like, I, have, I was coming back from my uh, autoimmune stuff and, and I just asked him to play because he was losing. I was like, dude, you're losing. Might as well lose with me. Like, let's, let's get Because I had no points. And Bet he loved that pitch. I wasn't going to play well. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and he fell for it. <laughs> but, then, but then after that season like we took a serious look at it we're like all right like let's think if we're actually meant for each other and like what we want to get out of this and who we want to do it with and so we weren't like committed to each other at all after the first season or, or first whatever end of the season um and that's when I went deepest into like who I am as a player so I like looked at my strengths and how can my strengths work with someone else's how can my personality work with someone else's? I mean, that's easy for me and Trevor because I already I know him better than anyone out here except for Taylor. Um, and then does he have the same goals in mind as me? Like some, if I want to go play with Troy Field, he's one of the best players in the country. That's not a bad idea, but he does not have the same goals as I have. So mm -hmm. like, I just wouldn't do it right now. It's just not on the table, right? Um, he wants to play domestically and, and do whatever... He wants to do it. but um i think yeah that's like the deepest you need to dive is like when you're committing to a partnership and and once you do commit and figure out okay this is the path i want to go i want to go on this journey with this person you can't look back like every if you're looking back after every tournament and every you know practice and like thinking like oh maybe maybe i should pick up that guy maybe i should pick up 
you ain't going to move forward. You're just like pulling yourself back with all those negative thoughts. And it's just terrible for the, the partnership, I think. So that's like the time when you need to put the most effort and thought into like mostly who you are and then go ask them who they are and where they're going and then see if that aligns. And then you got to commit. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That's like exactly, I think what made it so easy for me to coach some of those guys, especially Jeremy and Kane, like I said, just being at the same stage in life and knowing like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm here, dude. I'm, I'm going to put in a ton of time with you guys and, and, I love it. And I hope you guys have those same goals. And it started out just AVP. And then with Cam and Chase, I was like, okay, well, I would love to, you know, the opportunity to coach a team that's competing for, you know, Olympic spots. And, and obviously not for 2021, but moving forward, if they were to stick together, right. that would have been pretty fun, you know? And so now it's like, okay, well, now I get to learn from Casey who's been there and I get right. to work with Chase who's trying to get there. So we're all on board. And for me, it would be an honor to coach in the Olympics at any point in my life this is awesome. You know, I get to, I get to work with these guys. And so I think for me, that's really to answer your question from a while ago, I think that's <laughs> what's really keeping me coaching men is because I'm, I'm working with some of the greats. You know, I, I still would love to coach pretty much any guy if, if they're kind of vibing with me and they like what I'm doing. I like what they're doing. It would be a good experience, but for me someday, I mean, I want to coach at the highest level I can. I think that would be an awesome opportunity. Um, you know, I feel like I could help a team at that level. Um, and so getting to work with those guys now, you know, it only, it only strengthens that pitch later on when, like you said, when I find a team that has the ability to get there and has those goals. Right. right. And again, it's, it's athlete investment at the end of the day, right. You guys know, right. Yeah. Coaches are going to play a big part. Don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, I'm up in the stands, you know, or I'm in a little chair on the end line or whatever they're now doing. <laughs> the best life, right. Yeah. There's so much to that dynamic, like the, the traveling and like all the stuff we were talking about earlier if you have a coach in between, that's another player to take some of it. And I can take some of this information that I need my partner to know and I can filter it through the coach. And now mm -hmm. it's not annoying because it's coming from me because we need to be on the same page today. You and the coach don't need to be on the same page today. So I can filter <laughs> that through the coach <laughs> yeah. and keep us good, you know, like at certain times and like, I don't know, on the road, those Trevor and Jose can go out, you know, if I'm feeling like I'm in a bad mood, they can go out to dinner and have beers by themselves. And yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not just like leaving them by himself for, yeah. it's really yeah. helpful to have a coach that's like personality wise, like on the same page as you. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a, yeah, that natural buffer. Like you said, there's going to be times where you got something to say. And if you say it directly to Trevor, you know, it's not going to go well. Oh, I buy my <laughs> all the time. <laughs> like, mm, are, what? What you, uh, all right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, Micah, when does your college season start? So your pro season starts soon. I know you just started practicing for college, but when's your first match? Yeah, we open uh, next Thursday, the 25th. Uh, the with turn around. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. We've got we've got eight practices. God. <laughs> yeah, That's before, we, before we play the defending defending champions so we uh, uh on the schedule you know for me it, it, i kind of knew we'd have to play them early and 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 we're going to play them late and we, you know they're, they're for us it's geographic it makes sense to try to stay in california so unfortunately a lot of our matches are going to be against top five teams and that's just the way it is this year you know lmu is making a great push usc yeah. ucla we play them all two to three times each um so why you know why why hide from them let's yeah. go on day Love one that. you know why not um, I don't know how the athletes feel about that, but I will have them ready by Thursday to compete. That's for <laughs> sure. I don't know if we'll win. I don't know if we'll lose. I don't care, but we will compete. We're going to work our butts off and we'll see what happens. Right. Um, that, that I can be sure of. I love it. Yeah. But we're, we're excited. I mean, just the fact that these kids have a season, you know, and the, the yeah. fact that it is, we were able to, because there are so many California schools that are going, we're able to get almost 90% of our matches. We've got a trip to Cal Poly hopefully a trip to Hawaii, you know, assuming that state restrictions kind of stay the way they are, we're able to test at Long Beach airport. So they've got a lot to look forward to. And so working, you know, today's practice was just pure chaos, but it was just so much energy <laughs> and effort and attitude and competitiveness. And don't get me wrong. There's probably 500 oversets, but you know what? <laughs> Who cares? They're back. We're grateful to be there. You know, so I kind of knew going in, my expectation of quality was very low, but I was like, we are going to control it's what I call ACE, attitude, competitiveness, and effort. We're going to control 
those three things through and through, no matter what. I mean, we've spent one year talking about our minds and our mental health and getting ourselves into a position. Don't even worry about the physical. I know you'll be physically ready. You play beach volleyball five times a week. You know what I mean? You can, you can dust it off and get out there and play. But can you have a great attitude the whole time when things are, aren't going your way? And try, I was telling Trev, Travis this earlier. I mean, the wind picked up at like 2 p.m. And we were, you know, we're playing a 25 mile per hour wind all of a sudden. Huh. Um, and so it was, it, was, it was ugly. But we're just so happy to be out there. And, and the energy was great. And so we're, we're, you know, I think whoever we play, just the fact that we're going to have a match and we don't have to wear our mask, we can get out there and compete and just try to, you know, show off, show off what we've been working on. We're stoked. Oh yeah, awesome. Well, I'm stoked for you. I'm stoked for both of you. You both get to compete on Thursday. That's awesome. I know. Oh, I mean, yeah, try yeah. obviously not the the way you wanted to open a season in a country quota, but um, yeah. competition's competition, boys. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually grateful for it now. Like after talking with Mikel, my trainer today, I was like, it's like I get to play. Sweet. Yeah. I don't want to be here, but like in this position necessarily, but I get to play and the other teams don't. So I'll take it. Yeah. 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 I think that was like kind of the mindset too with the, with the whole champions cup, you know, just like, Hey, we're, we're playing, you know, and the format, whatever, you just put it to the back of your mind and you just go out there and you just play the sport you love yeah. and you let the rest take care of itself. You know, it's a great way to frame it of just like, it's something we ended practice with today. It's like, Hey, we're going to practice gratitude. We're going to say one thing we're grateful for because honestly we could not be here and so the fact that we are here i'm extremely grateful that we had a practice today and then you know i kicked it off and we went you know it was it was a pretty cool way to ground yourself you know and so like you said try it sucks to compete in the country quota if you didn't have to but right. you're playing you have the chance to win and you're going to doha you know what i mean like that's that's pretty awesome for sure love it yeah well it is a, it's midnight over here for me and yeah. i've been up since 5 30 so i'm crashing <laughs> mike so great having you on man great chatting absolutely boys i i really appreciate the time i knew it was late for you i was i kind of maybe had a side bet with myself if you would make it to midnight and you, you really <laughs> proved me wrong so i'm gonna go slam a beer for you <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> i see you try right. have a good one right. your kid. good I'll luck you on guys. thursday fellas shoot i'll see you in a few days <laughs> Later. Boys.